Okay, I think we'll get going. Um, Dr. Davis is meeting with the board right now, so he's not going to be joining us tonight. Um, hopefully you have uh, your name tents, and we have the slides for you here, if you're, if you're so inclined to peek and look forward. Um, we're here, I know, uh, I know we uh, had to do a little bit of rescheduling due to weather, so appreciate everyone for uh, taking advantage of that and uh, being able to be here tonight. So uh, we'll, we'll try to get you out of here on time as we always do. Um, we're going to go through the second part of the indoor practice facility meeting. We're going to see some pretty detailed information, including costs, so we'll get some really good information. So I'm going to turn it over to Clint. He can get going, and then we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. Thank you, Dave. Uh, again, as we have been, we're, we're going to continue to track uh, the feedback that we uh, get from the group. Um, there were, I think, um, a couple of uh, themes that we're starting to see, and there's probably a few more that, that we're, we're haven't listed here. We'll continue to track those as we go through. Um, but just kind of a, a couple things that like transportation, you know, a central location between the high school was, was a theme we saw over and over. Uh, again, another theme is, you know, who are we building this for and making sure that, you know, as, as we're building this for our school district that we're prioritizing uh, those needs above and beyond, you know, rentals and so forth. And I think, you know, uh, the district uh, is, is committed uh, to that. They're building this for, for the students and, and, and the community first and foremost, uh, above and beyond kind of outside entities um, looking at it. Again, we're going to look at a few revisions. Does this thing show up on there? No. Um, look at a few revisions uh, to the concepts. Um, kind of discuss and finalize some of those needs and goals. Uh, you probably already looked at the cost estimate. I'm glad you didn't walk out, but, um, but we'll look at some costs. Um, again, talk a little bit about timing, and then talk. We'll have a little bit of a discussion about site uh, selection. So again, uh, we're continuing to track these. We'll add these uh, as we go through. Uh, meeting one feedback, uh, meeting two feedback. Had to break this one out onto two slides. Um, again, appreciate uh, some of the comments here. Um, again, we'll, we'll get into some of the specifics, uh, energy costs. Um, there was a lot of really good discussion about the YMCA involvement. I, um, uh, Dr. Davis did give us an update on that. He has, he has met with them, um, I think. Uh, kind of the long and short of that is in terms of the, the facility and how uh, it impacts them or doesn't. Really their only concern is if there's an overlap in programming. So for example, if, uh, uh, if we start, if the district were to start to offer something that, you know, steals people away from them, uh, was, and, and Adam, I guess I'll let you No, no, that, that was, uh, so in a, in, in a nutshell, they were very excited about the project. They were excited about the possibility of partnering with us on various aspects of the project. And I think their, their request is to just keep, keep them posted as we go through the process. So didn't seem to be competitive. Granted, there's certain areas of overlap, but we, we work those out all the time already. So they were, they were kind of excited. Did not feel like they needed to be part of this group, but felt like if they were kept up to date, that would certainly be helpful. So. Uh, again, uh, we'll continue to track these and, and up, provide updates um, as we go through. But again, um, we want to know that we're you know, obviously taking these very seriously as we go through. Um, timing, again, was another theme. And we have a slide in, in a little bit in the future um, uh, you know, to, to discuss that uh, piece of it. Um, Uh, again, parking is going to be something we're going to talk a little bit more about today, too. So, uh, again, that's another theme that kind of permeated through as, as we look through this. Uh, so, I'm going to turn it over to Nate. He's going to kind of talk through the solutions again and some updates uh, as well as the cost. Hi, thanks for having me and, and Clint here tonight. Um, I know I've not uh, spoken yet before, but I've uh, been working closely with Clint in the district for the past couple of years and <clears throat> excited to be a part of this group. So just as a quick summary here, this was the proposed plan option that we talked to you guys about two or three weeks ago. Still had the full 100 uh, yard field with the two end zones uh, accommodating roughly 120 yards of turf space. Um, uh, uh, auxiliary storage, maintenance, mechanical spaces for this turf space down here in the bottom. 
And then up on the kind of upper portion of the plan, there was the space for the rec department, a physical slash phys uh, physical therapy slash fitness area with training associated to it, and then a field house with four courts, um, some seating, and then um, locker rooms. Then on the second floor, um, had some mechanical space, additional spectator seatings, and kind of a cafe area with potentially a concessions area. We had taken your feedback from that meeting last time and revised uh, the plan option to be a little bit more similar to the precedent that we looked at in the Champion Center. So stacking the courts instead of all in one row to be more in this quadrant format, um, which would then allow better spectating for all four courts. Um, uh, this large area down here where the turf is largely unchanged, and then you can see that by you know taking this linear, um, what was previously linear, all lined up and stacking them, then kind of creates just a different shape to this simplified building um, with the rec department and physical uh, therapy slash fitness adjacent to these two areas. Um, this does change the second floor slightly, so now we're <clears throat> looking at potentially doing seating from both sides of the four court gym, giving optimum seating to the four different courts. Um, this would have uh, spectator seating for up to 800 people. Um, and then there would be casual seating between kind of this open field house area. And then you could uh, imagine some glass or, or windows looking from this upper area into the indoor practice facility with the turf area. So that, you know, if there's items going on here or, or whatever might be going on, that there's visibility both into the turf area as well into the field house area. I guess before I move on, any questions regarding kind of this revised plan or any comments? Is there any feedback that we didn't catch? Subject matter experts. Uh, again, we talked a little bit about it last time. Any feedback from you guys? I think the um, the upper level seating makes a lot more sense. You know, we have a lot more people closer to the courts. Um, so that's, that's the first thing I noticed. Okay. Yeah, I like the change as well. Anything missing from your guys' perspective? Well, without getting into the details too much, no. I mean, just the physical space itself, it, I think it's, it's, it's an awesome option. So uh, the number that probably everyone is probably interested in is the cost estimate for a facility like this. Um, obviously, again, this is a 100 yard, 120 really yard turf facility, four basketball courts, the upper area um, does come with, with quite the price tag. Now I will notate that this um, construction cost estimate is based off of doing this project and bidding this project out in 2027. So forecasting out a little bit here. Um, and we're gonna talk a little bit in a couple of slides about the timing of this, right? If we can, if we can somehow accelerate this, um, you know, up in the, the schedule of years, the cost is going to come down, right? With the inflation baked into this number. Um, but this does uh, assume 12 months of construction underneath kind of the, the same construction delivery approach that FAC 1.0 went through as far as um, the design bid out to contractors and then the, and then the build portion of it. Um, this is a 180,000 square foot facility. So that's sometimes a number is a little bit hard to kind of wrap your heads around. Um, for instance, a project that many of you are probably very familiar with is the Bell Phillips Middle School, the new middle school going up on the north side. That is a 220,000 square foot facility. Now it is um, a, a bit different, right? That's a very much educational facility. It does have a three station gym in it. Um, but you can imagine here with the, the impact of turf, the, you know, all the inside components of what it takes to run a turf facility, such as netting, um, batting cages, and field goal posts, and all those sorts of things, you start to, uh, you know, get that to a place where you can logistically run that turf facility. Um, there's a lot of components associated to that, as well as the, you know, the four court um, pieces, as well as, is, has a lot of, I guess, higher quality and um, you know, very important pieces to make that facility run. Um, so that just give me a little bit of a grasp of what the 180,000 square feet kind of equates to a little bit. Um, on this sheet and in front of you as well, um, there's kind of a low and a high spectrum. 
Um, it, it's obviously hard to look in four years, five years in advance and say that you know this is going to be the exact number. So a range is, is likely the best way to look at this. Obviously we want to trend closer to the low, if not be lower than that, but um, and just being realistic in what 2027 looks like. Um, otherwise there is a, few, a little bit of breakdown related to what site improvements mean, right? So storing water underneath the ground, how do we you know, do the curb and gutter and all of those specific details. General construction is, is the, the bid or the building cost itself, the physical structure. Uh, the general contractor costs, what are their operating costs to build a building of this size? And then um, soft costs, so that includes contingency that consi consu considers design fees, that considers um, furniture, equipment that goes in there, um, <coughs> building permits, etc. There's a lot of pieces associated with soft costs. I may have missed this on the site improvements. Does that include the purchase of the property? Um, in this situation, it does not include the purchase of the property. Good question. Because we don't know at this point in time. Sure. So right. Yeah. Good point. Any other questions about this slide? Do you do you know the breakdown between what it would cost just to do the turf and just to do the basketball side? Um, we don't have that specifically broken out, but I will tell you that there's two different structural components to that building, right? So this building down here of the turf is largely a metal building system. Think of something like a warehouse or something like that that has the large spans associated to it. And there's a different component to building something like this. So that is something that we could look at as far as breaking that out into a little bit of detail, but I don't have that for you tonight. Any other questions? Well, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just was cu more curious because I know the turf side was probably a little bit less expensive just based on the structural designs for a basketball court. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. There's some efficiencies, right? You know, you, you pick this out and you kind of replicate it by 120 yards compared to this has a lot of complexity structurally. But that's a good point. We can break it out. The, the shared functions are going to be the thing that'll be a little difficult because, you know, it's a little hard to kind of break out, you know, half of the bathrooms or that type of thing. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I think knowing those costs and where, where the money's exactly going, we can, we can work on that. Any other questions? Okay. Um, feel free to continue if they, if they pop in your mind. Otherwise, we will talk about timing. Okay. Um, project timing. Um, there's several different possibilities and first off before we even get started this is all draft right uh, in terms of dates and times that we may throw up here but we tried to put together some concepts around project timing the best part about all this and I was having a conversation with uh, Clint and Nate earlier is the fact that we have a board approved consolidation plan we have four phases and it's already been approved and that part is is a big deal. Uh, I know Oshkosh for years was kind of always talking about what are we going to do about our facilities? What are we going to do? The, the previous FAC did a, a, a tremendous amount of work and we put that together. So, so that, that was the hardest part. Uh, while this seems like a, a very big project, having those four phases delineated really helped light our way. So the first phase is what we're in the middle of right now. So we're constructing Bell Phillips Middle School. That is slated to open in fall of 2023. Then we're going to go ahead and at the same time we're going to be building the new elementary school which is yet to be named and that will open in fall of 2024. So that is the first phase of this project. Uh, that allowed us to, that'll take us from five schools on three sites down to two schools on two sites. And that should cover a good chunk of the north side of town. All right? So phase two with a potential, this is draft, which means it's not in stone, so don't go running out there and saying, oh, we were going to referendum in 2026, because that, that's, that's an option, but this is what that would look like. That would be phase two. Now phase two, it, the cornerstone of phase two is <coughs> South Park Middle School replacement. That facility is also 100 plus years old and is in dire need of replacement. So just like 
Merrill Webster consolidation on the north side is, a, is sort of the cornerstone of phase one. South Park replacement would be phase two. Then the other part is elementary school consolidation and remodeling. Probably the two biggest schools that would be repurposed or decommissioned would be Roosevelt. It would be would go away as a school. And Shapiro would be repurposed. Right now it's planned to be a 4K early childhood center. And then what we would do is add on to the other schools to make their enrollment nearly similar to the new elementary school that's opening here. So we'd have, uh, that would allow us to go down in the quantity of elementary schools. I think in the end we'd have nine elementary schools. Yeah, nine elementary schools. We'd have three middle schools. So you'd, you'd have South Park and Traeger. And then of course we'd have Val Phillips on the north side of town. And then of course our two high schools. So that's phase two. So one of the things we talked about was, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Then phase three is the high school replacement. Phase four is the remodeling or replacement of North High. So right now, it looks as though some or all of these projects would live somewhere in here, okay? In terms of uh, either attached to phase two or around phase two. Most likely, these projects are gonna require some form of referendum funding, even if we get some really solid donations. Um, so they would most likely have to either attach this way or attach that way. So right now the potential and what uh, the board is trying to do is set up the financing and the funding and the debt service and everything to function properly to allow us to have a shot in 2026 for phase two, 2031 for phase three. Okay, that, that's, the, that's what's currently on the decks. Now this could be accelerated. You know, somebody said, well, if somebody came up with donations, what could we do something faster? Yep. Uh, if all of a sudden somebody came in and said, we have the dollars or sufficient dollars for donation or we're very, very close, that may accelerate any of the four of these projects. So that gives you sort of a time. My guess is, given the cost of the projects, these are big projects, and they're gonna be servicing the entire Oshkosh community, um, it's probably gonna have to get attached in some way to a phase two or a phase three or four. So questions on timing. Yeah. At some point, uh, I think we covered this in a prior FAC, but at some point along the way here, we'll be made aware of um, what referendum debt it kind of is scheduled to roll off to yes. kind of walk through that or kind yep. of give some guidance on it. And that's something that Drew is working with the board on as we structure that, and that's what that's where these dates are selected from. So they're, they're setting that up right now. They're working with the school board to take a look at, okay, what are the various options that are there as they begin to set up? Because what, what most districts do, or what a lot of districts do, <clears throat> is they replace their buildings on a set schedule. And every so often the debt of those drops and it allows them to put a new building in with either a flat or even in some cases declining mill rate. And people always say, well, how did they do that? Well, they did that because school number, school number three came off the books and we're, we're replacing school number four on the books at the same time. Um, Oshkosh had kind of pushed this back and back and back and back and back, which is what got us in this situation in the first place. And now we have a multi-phase plan to get us through a healthy replacement cycle. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're setting that up right now. So Drew, did I miss anything with that or anything you want to comment on that? No, I think you did a good job. All right. <laughs> totally unscripted. That's good. <laughs> Other questions on the time? Pink Pete. Yeah. Um, I, I know a lot. We're talking with the class, you know, class academics and everything. Has anything ever been thought of for like the food service part of this stuff? I mean, because right now, I mean, I'm at the high school, West High, right. and I know how strapped they are right now for space at the high schools. And it's only getting worse with the programs getting more and more for breakfast and lunches and stuff. Right. Is there any thought of doing anything for food service to help accommodate some of their? Well, I think the the new middle school is going to have its own kitchen area, correct? <coughs> it's so that production kitchen. It, it'll have its own production kitchen. So as we begin to replace these facilities, we'll be taking into account food service is a big part of that okay. to make sure that we modernize those facilities as we go. Yeah, well, to, to both the high schools, when we get to phase three and four, both of those will end up replacing with new serveries, um, serving kitchens like they have now, but we'll, we'll include in their expanded storage spaces and, and really do that the way it should be done for, for today's 
environments. Um, so we will, in, in a district this big, you would never have more than two or three servant kitchens anyway, um, where you're actually doing all the prep within the, the production kitchens within those um, to go out. So when we get done with this, we'll, we, we haven't completely decided on South Park whether that will be a production kitchen or not. Um, being so close to West, it, it may or may not make sense to, to have that as a production, full-blown production kitchen. It may be some kind of a production kitchen, but okay. And a lot of it's just storage to too. Out, yeah, but we, we are looking at the food storage okay. details. Okay. Right. Good question. Speaking yeah. of kitchens and food on the athletic facilities, I think the uh, administration needs to determine how important is food during events. If you go to a herd game, sometimes you'll wait 45 minutes in line for food. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it's either going to be important or not as far as um, facilities for providing the, the uh, spectators with refreshments. Yeah, and, and I think our approach, again, kind of <coughs> stealing a little bit from the Champion Center, I mean, I think there is a bit of a hospitality approach. If you're going to build a facility like this, if it's going to be attractive as a tournament venue and a rental venue, that you have to have those amenities. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, again, I think a lot of the idea um, specific to Go ahead and put transition in for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, this the second floor, again, creating this kind of as a has hospitality with, with concession space on the second floor, as well as with concession space on the first floor. So this this spine, this kind of shared spine that goes through the building, really being kind of that hospitality zone for the building, because you're not always there to watch your kid play. You might be between games. Uh, maybe you're there an hour early or staying an hour later. Um, so I, I, I think as we plan this, I think we should be, I agree with you, I think we need to uh, either go all in or I guess not, not consider it at all. Well, as a grandfather visiting or watching grandkids play basketball, um, sometimes you're there for five or six hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. Um, I was going to ask you who like, plays in those tournaments. I know that it's very nice to have like a place where you can like, go get food and like, just take a break from like, the court and just like, go and sit. Like, that's a very nice feature, and I really like that about the Champion Center. Good point. Yeah. Has there been any thought about possibly creating like storefronts for secondary income through rental property and things like that, uh, businesses coming in and renting space to, that could help kind of offset, not a ton of the cost, but it could create you know, reoccurring revenue that could be a little more useful in the long term, especially for like the ongoing cost of keeping the building updated. Yeah, I don't know. Truly, I don't know how that works. In terms of you could. guys sort of serving as landlord, is that something the district is able to? Yeah, do? that gets a little tricky with taxpayer money, and the city typically frowns against uh, upon us, even with the properties that we have purchased to kind of expand room for for potential buildings. They really ground pound must be becoming landlords and, and being in that capacity and it, it brings a different liability to the district than we typically would see. I was just wondering just due to the fact of hoping that it's more uh, funded privately that it could be an option but well, there, when we get a little further in the, uh, the presentation, there is a word partnership that we're including here. So again, I, I think if, if there was a, something to private entity, I, I would think in terms of a partnership where maybe the building gets a little larger with funding from an outside source or something like that, that would be something as long as they're managing and controlling yeah. it and funding that part of the project. Can you give me an example? Because I'm not quite following. Like storefront? So um, an example would be like, I'll just use like a chiropractor as an example, right? Like they have an office there or a physical therapist or a clothing stores, you know, something of that nature. Somebody that's just renting from the district okay. and paying rent, essentially. Or, or a Jimmy John's, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Anything. The one thing we, the board, has been open to is the concept of naming rights and having those on a cyclical basis as well. Because sometimes that can really help you raise, raise dollars to, to either enhance the facility or pay for key components of it. Any other questions on time? So 
I'm sorry. So going back to his idea, could the school district be a franchisee? A franchise? I mean, could we like? I don't know. Could we be a franchisee? Uh, like uh. Like, can you buy Jimmy John? Like yeah. a franchise of Jimmy John's? Yeah. Um. Wow, I've not heard of that. Kind of like colleges do. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. Um, just a just wild question. I'd have to look into that and see and, and see what it would be. Uh, just because we don't have a typical structure that a franchise um, would require, as far as here's truly where your hierarchy sits and here are your stakeholders, because your stakeholders have to sign off on liability um, and, and financial responsibilities. Well, there's that's not a component the school district's structured like. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to think of the franchises that I've been involved in, how that would look as a public entity like that. Oh, it's just wild I, I'd have to look into that and see to get a better answer for you. Maybe a different way to accomplish that idea would be, you know, instead of maybe operating the concession yourselves, you contract with someone to operate the concessions or some other part of the facility. It's maybe a better way. Uh, yeah, you, you know, universities are typically doing a, they're not the franchisee, they're, they're yeah, renting the, the space or, or contracting with this food service organization that does the work with all of the different companies themselves. So they, they themselves are not the franchisee owner of, of that facility. Well, it's really what you described where we're just building a little extra yep. space and then renting it out to somebody. Right. Right. So. All right. Um, we are going to then spend a little bit of time in, in kind of groups. So again, I, I think uh, at, at this point, again, uh, you know, comments, thoughts on budget, uh, comments, thoughts on, again, have we kind of, as we've defined need for this facility, have, is the solution more or less, again, the, the big boxes there, are we, are we satisfying the need? Um, and then, uh, again, some thoughts on, on timing. So we'll give you guys a, a little bit of time to, again, work and jot your notes down there. Uh, and then uh, thoughts or comments on timing. So again, why don't we start with concept? We'll go go through the four tables. So I don't think we have a problem with concept. Okay. Really with concept. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, we concept was fine. Okay. Yeah. Not not on concept. Okay. You know we're about the same flow as everybody else is. All right. Subject matter experts. I think I kind of heard from a few of you earlier. Okay. All right, then cost. Why don't we start over here? I mean, cost kind of seems like it is what it is, right? If you want to build it, yeah, it's going to cost that. You know, so. well, we just mentioned that when it comes like to referendums, some people just jump to the bottom line and go too, too damn much and vote no, versus looking at the detail of actually how much will this cost me over a period of time, and then it becomes much more doable and acceptable. Yep. yep. One related thing on timing, I think, uh, you know, just thinking about costs on past projects, the costs really matter depending upon what the economic climate is at the time. So if in the approval you can have some flexibility on the timing that, you know, if we're in a soft environment that we can accelerate a little bit faster to take advantage of, you know, market conditions, I think you want to build that in if there's a way to do that. Yeah, you know that you can push the timing to accelerate faster if you know we're in a downturn and we're more hungry. It would be a good time to be able to bring forward a project like this and probably get really competitive bids. Yeah, and some of maybe just similar to the comment of breaking this up, maybe just showing what we think this is in today's costs uh, versus again this is projected out with inflation included. That might help put it in perspective as well. You know, hey, if we could build this now, we can, you know, you can see what we can score unquote save. Uh, now versus versus waiting. We don't know whether inflation will go up or down because we, of the we, way we, it's been. You're, you're correct. Yeah. There yeah. is no there is no way to predict. We would all be in a much different place right now. Oh, if we that. Right. So. So we need a crystal ball. We do. But again, we 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 uh, we, we didn't get too extreme with it. We tried to average things out what we're seeing and, and provide a realistic look at it. I mean, the other piece too is uh, you know um, interest rates. Uh, again, districts are able to borrow at really really low rates, and 
the feds keep, you know, they are going to start raising those. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see increases there eventually, and that's going to affect, again, the cost to the taxpayers eventually. Um, I apologize, I wasn't here last time if we discussed this, but I have no idea, like, if you were to rent this facility out, or when you say you hold an event, how much money do you make off of a, a, track, a state track event, or a, like, so that people could see, here's what it's costing, but here's revenue that we could be bringing in if we host events, but I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I can, um, uh, we really haven't defined what that is. I, I think that um, is a discussion that would be something that districts would have to go through a pretty high degree of analysis of kind of comparing what they are to their neighbors and, you know, and, um, you know, we could, I could reach out to Rhinelander to sort of see what their rentals are. I mean, I, I guess from the district, when you go to a tournament somewhere, you know, with a facility like this, what is your entrance fee? Well, just comparing it to like the bubble at, at UWO, I mean, they're charging three to three to four hundred dollars an hour to, to use the space, an outside group. I even think like, if you host a tournament and people come to your city, and they get a hotel room and they eat out and they like that whole heads you know heads to beds concept that's where the real money is for our, you know instead of us always driving everywhere else and spending money in everybody else's community people will start spending it in ours i was going to say i think your largest money maker is going to be the weekend events versus the the not like the school district event you know what i mean the biggest ones are going to be the youth permits that's what drives your biggest money coming in versus like a state tournament type thing. By the way, we had a sidebar conversation and we totally neglected to mention that Jimmy Johns does deliver, so they don't even need to be here because they can just, they'll just, they'll just be a steady car. So, uh, Jimmy Johns, you know. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was going to say, Kristen said Starbucks does not deliver, though, and that's what just okay. that's what yeah. Yeah. the driving force. I'm going to, Will mentioned this earlier, too, that when we talk about rentals and all the income we can bring in that needs to be under sold versus oversold yeah, to get people's get people's acceptance of this yeah and, and that goes back to the earliest comment that we are putting the the district first, first uh, the yeah. needs of the district first you know community needs um, right behind that and then whatever is above and beyond that would be you know kind of the cherry on top so to speak but I do think it's important to understand that this not only is going to serve district needs, but we also have the advantage of have a recreation department that is part of us as well. So it's uh, the, the rest. Rest of, if you don't have if you don't have children in the Oshkosh area school district, which is 80 percent of our population do not, um, there's something in this for you too. And I think that's going to be a, a key important piece as we communicate. I would think that the goal for a facility like this is it's operationally neutral, right? You're, whoever you're putting in the building, your janitors, your operations in terms of energy costs and stuff it is being offset with those rentals. Again, anything above and beyond that, you know, would I think be a, a bonus. To, again, update or provide. Yes? Maybe one comment on kind of the idea of, you know, maybe renting to people that would have an interest in being there, you know, whoever that could be. Maybe a different way to get there is whatever site gets determined, maybe you can buy a little bit more land and then have some surveyed off for private development that could be complementary and could have some benefit to be next door, but it doesn't have to be district controlled. You know, that can that way you're not getting into taking that over from the private development and you kinda of let them take care of that, let them locate near you, have that available and that's up to them to do, and you're not stepping on anyone's toes that way. All right. Um, uh, cost for this group. Okay. Uh, I just have a question that we didn't even talk about. If we're talking about a hundred yard, hundred ten yard facility, and none of the facilities that we looked at, I think, were that large. Um, what would it cost be to shrink it? Would it be a lot or just minimal? Because some of the costs are just static. It's yeah. going to be the same no matter how big it is. Yeah, and, and I mean, 
again, could we design it in such a way that we build, you know, half of it now, and we could build the other half in, in the future? Um, I, that would be a situation as well. I, I don't know what that number is off yeah. the, the top of my head, but we could we can take a look at that too if we want to kind of break a number up for it. We're also the only district that has two high schools. So, I mean, yeah. just double the space, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna have both football teams practicing in there, you know, double the space. Yep. Mm -hmm. One of the things that um, we talked about is, and I think somebody else mentioned it, is translating the total cost into digestible bites for the taxpayer. Um, and then, um, Herb had a, a good point when I said this, but Dave, I really liked what you said, and I've heard it many times before, is how did we get to this point, and why? And why are we in this position now? And Herb said, well, you know, we've communicated that, maybe the community just is listening. And um, I kind of came back with my, you know, health response of when you're trying to get a kid to try new foods, you try 14, 15 times. So maybe we need to communicate this 14 different ways, but I think that's really important. The other thing is we tend to communicate that right when we're asking them for money. And I think we need to start communicating that. Like it should just be a mantra year after year after year. So well, the, the community's listening and they do get that because the last two strategic meetings, the number one thing that the community told us through focus groups, through surveys, through sitting down with people, the number one thing they told us was get a plan for facilities. And I think that's part of what gave the board uh, a push to kind of say it's it's important for our community. It was the number one thing that kept popping up. Because um, you guys have talked about it. We all know that we have not kept pace with the facilities of other districts around us. You don't have to drive more than 10 minutes and you're going to find stuff that's much better than what we have here. And people started saying enough. And then, and even those who weren't interested in new, flashy, nice facilities, they were looking at a Merrill or a Smith or whatever going, well, how long can you keep that going? You know, so, so the, everybody in Oshkosh kind of got an idea that no matter what your uh, push is for the district, facilities was an issue. And, and we talked at the last, in the referendum in 2014 and 16, when we had to talk about budget cuts and how did we get here, we hit that very, very hard, that, that concept of kicking the can down the road does nothing to help us. It increases our costs long term, and we can do this in a frugal way, but we got to be very intentional about it. So people have, have parroted that back to us, so that, that's good news. And I think that's where the consolidation plan came from, which I, I got to say, it was was a was really heartening that the, not only the board unanimously approved it, but also the community demanded it before we ever went to referendum for phase one. We didn't create those four phases because we were geniuses. We created those four phases because the community said we did, we want to see more than phase one before we vote on it, which was really smart, and th and th and that's where we that's how we got here. So. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, two things. One is, you know, people come and go from Oshkosh and have a, a base, but so there's new people coming in. And secondly, I think COVID has really changed people's perceptions of a lot of things, and yes, we yes. don't know what. So, that's we do, we still need to keep keep the we Correct. still need to keep providing information 14, 15 times. Absolutely. Um, that, that communication, you can never communicate too much. Exactly. Yeah. I think related to that, um, I think as you have new ones come on, or there's going to be like an annual way or a quarterly way that you're reminding the community, here's the average age of our buildings in our district. Because mm -hmm. I think when a new one comes on, some people think it's solved. Yes. And, yes. you know, that's just not the case given the age of some of the other buildings. So. I don't know what the number is now, if it's still like 60, 70, 80 years old is what the average age is or whatever the number is, but it's a big number. Right. And, you know, as we're going to go through this over the course of the next decade, it can't only, that can't only be communicated the years that we're asking for. Correct. You know, that's going to be kind of beat everyone over the head regularly. Yeah. Or they have melancholy <clears throat> for the... <laughs> well, people still think Traeger's new. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. 97. Yes, 1997. Yes, 97. Or, or when we close a school, they're like, oh, but it has such historic value. It's like, no, it's not. Or, oh, it's a melancholy, and it's like, let's think past of our emotions. And, yeah. Right. I was, on, I was on the board. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we, I kind of was saving timing. I think we've kind of touched on that. Any other comments well, on time? I mean, I think we were really like, you know, people want us now. I mean, looking at how far out we are looking at some of those years, like the thought of keeping West for another 10, like, impresses me. <laughs> I gotta be honest. I, you know, if people, if people are excited now, I almost feel like, what can we do to move this ahead? Well, people and asked, on the same hand, we did say that you know there is some concern because the Bell Phillips was over budget, and are we going to then get you know a lot of backlash for that? So that was kind of both sides of that conversation. Mm -hmm. People asked that once mm -hmm. we started going down phase one of how fast can once they saw all four phases, there were several people who were like, "Can we get all all four done in a ten year window?" And could you? Yes. However, what you run into is some reality of numbers. And, and if you stack too many projects too close, you run into the debt issues. And, and then that drives the mill rate up because, you know, we've been very fortunate that it, when we've made a good case to the public and the mill rate has been a reasonable increase, they have supported us time and again. That's, that's nothing we take for granted. We're very, very cautious with that. And, and I think we're kind of in that mode of, if people are pushing us to get this done, that's a good position to be in. That's a really good position to be in because ultimately the voters get to decide how fast this goes. So there's nothing that says it couldn't go quicker. It, and, and we're going to be able to lay that out for the school board and what, as well as the community if there's public sentiment to say, please accelerate. We're also going to see what the, what the public sentiment is on it through what's the donation potential. You know, I, I don't think anybody's going to pay for all of a project in one shot, but you'll know if we start getting donations towards the projects as they're well defined, you'll, you'll begin to get a read on that too. Um, but here's the best part. Once you have a plan, then you can move at the speed of the voter. You know, otherwise if you don't have a plan, you never, I mean think about this, we could have talked about this 10 years ago, and we could be 10 years farther down the track. You know, so yeah, we can lament that, but I, 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 I would tend to celebrate the fact that we're here today doing this. I think that I, I would not bet against this community. We seem to be putting the putting all the ducks in a row in the right order, in the right way, to be able to make it happen. All right. Any other thoughts on on timing? All right, so location, site selection. Uh, again, I'll keep reiterating this. The goal for tonight is not for us to play realtor. It's not for us to be searching on Zillow for sites. Um, but I, again, I, I If you would like to donate like 80 acres, yeah. just let us know. But again, I, I think it's important uh, for this group to give some general guidance of direction of, you know, given what we talked about for this facility, given what we talked about for the goals for this facility, you know, is, is there kind of a, a location in the city that, that best suits, or in the district, I should say, that, that best suits where, where this, where this uh, should go? Uh, again, given there's this sort of a shared use between the high schools, um, you know, is, is some kind of central location between those uh, the best spot? And I'm kind of jumping ahead a, a little bit of, of some of the, the talking points. But again, I think that's kind of the, the feedback that we're kind of hoping to get. So again, as a reminder, here is the uh, various district owned properties uh, throughout the community and district. Uh, again, a reminder that we do have the Riff Road uh, parcel uh, available to us. Uh, a reminder that that's roughly 38 acres, so a nice size site, which may be a little better suited to uh, a future discussion of this group. Um, but uh, again, it, it is a, a, a nice blank slate uh, to work well. Can I ask one question? Yeah. Has anyone approached the district with how much home building has been starting to occur out there about acquiring that land and then you eject and kind of recalibrate on where the site could be good? Drew, did you get any phone calls today? <laughs> no. 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 No, not yet. But I, I wondered about that. I wondered about that too because uh, I 
we have some friends who just built a house out there and it's it's starting to pop and, and I was like, mm, I wonder that's um, you and you and Drew can have a sidebar conversation. How much space do we need? Like are, are any of our current sites big enough to have this facility? Yeah. Like I mean we have if Roosevelt's coming down, is that big enough? I mean, I wouldn't think so, but I mean. So Roosevelt's about three acres. Uh, again, we're mentioning Shapiro's about 10. So if that, that does change use, um, that um, again, I, without analyzing the site to see exactly how it would fit. Um, Traeger's 42 acres. Uh, so again, if you kind of do flip back, and hopefully you can maybe read the small numbers on your print, but. Um, so those are uh, listed on here. I, mean, I, I don't know that there's a specific one that sort of rises, uh, initially kind of rises to the top as, as a possibility, um, but. Uh, okay, sorry, how many acres do we need for this? We'll get into that in just a second here, so. Um, so we did introduce uh, this concept to you last time, kind of talking through as we, as we look at site considerations and parking was a big thing that you guys uh, mentioned on, on your, your comments from last time. So our first time through, we kind of took a look at what's the worst case scenario for this facility, meaning it's being used at 100% capacity for all the spaces. The, um, the way that the, what's a little tricky about the way the, the code is, is we do kind of have to, do have to sort of look at things from a worst case. Uh, but the code also does have leniency in that the amenities and services we provide to a building, um, we can make a justification for, um, for how we look at this. So again, we, we looked at kind of a, a, a really worst case scenario, uh, providing every single parking spot that the village and, and our city would require. We believe we probably need close to 12 acres. If we break this up and look at it a little more judiciously, um, we believe we can cut that down pretty significantly. So, again, taking a look at how the field house would be used during a typical event, um, calculating our occupants there, um, calculating an occupant load for the turf, just knowing it mostly will be used as a practice type facility, um, and then looking at a situation where that's being uh, the turf's being used in a practice type manner. The, the, the field house area is being utilized as a tournament type uh, with a, you know 800 occupants, uh, and then getting a, a, a lesser count than we had previously. In this case, we need almost half of the parking spaces that we had shown in the previous one, so about 375. So as we extrapolate that out into a, a revised concept, we cut that down to about nine acres. Um, if we can, um, maybe a, a better case scenario where this is built next to uh, or near another school, uh, where it's built near uh, potentially some parking, or where we can make the justification that you know if this was a you know a city block or most of a city block, and there there would be street parking around it. Um, if we were able to reduce that to about 250 parking spots, we can get down closer to seven acres. So again, just kind of wanted to show uh, as we look at parking that that becomes, you know, as you probably saw from that first one, that becomes probably the biggest driver for overall uh, site. Um, what about the, I'm just looking at Onyx, uh, the eight acres off of New York and Jackson that it's owned by the university? And that should be right next to where the new school is going in right too, across right? The street. Where well, that, that could diagonally. be that could potentially work as also overflow parking. Okay. If you can make like I don't know, you know what the I drive by that. I live down there, so I drive by that all the time. And yeah, that's eight acres. Is I think it's eight acres. Let me look. Yeah. It's a uh, North Hall Park, East Hall, East, Park. North East Hall Park. Right. Yeah. It's owned by the. Board of Reg Regents, right. and it's uh, yeah, it's eight point two nine acres. Well, the only thing you see there is Sunday morning rugby practice. Yeah, I you don't see a lot that happens oh, there. Right. Some like university, like co-ed sports, like ultimate frisbee and stuff, but it's not used. All of that could happen in the facility itself too. Right. We could work. There could be a deal with the university where. You know they could use it based off that but I mean that's eight acres right in the middle of town right in the middle of everything 
Right. You broke the first rule in the evening, but that's a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, a that's a. That's a. He didn't use Zillow. Oh yeah. Yeah, I use Onyx. It's okay. Like <laughs> 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 well, like yes. Is there at this time plans for retro? No. No. Uh, nothing in the works. Nothing else could be. No, historic. You know, when Riff Road has kind of come and gone a couple of times. Uh, before I ever joined the district, I know it was considered as a site for Oak Lawn. That went yes. down a few times, I think. Right. Um, when we built Oak Lawn, uh, the district was very, very gun shy about doing anything that wasn't on the existing Oak Lawn site. Uh, and and I think as a community, we were a little bit. Mm, I don't know if we can go that far. So we built a really nice school on that site. But that kind of then people started saying, well, what's going to happen with Roof Road? Um, it's been up for sale ever since that time, and nobody's really bid on it at that, you know. And then there was some discussion of other groups wanting to build different kinds of facilities. Um, there's been these discussions, but nothing has ever bubbled up to the surface as yet. I mean, and, get, and one thing Stan always said is, the last thing Oshkosh needs is to add to our quantity of schools. Yeah. Because we needed to go in the opposite direction. Yeah. Bigger but fewer physical facilities. And, and, and if we're going to do that, I think building something like this in Brick Road is going to be shut down too. Well, it, for, for, for some reason, and I feel it too, you know, I, 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 it feels really far out of town. Yes. Yeah, you know, and then that's always been. And I, I'm like, it really isn't that far, but it, no, it is. But it feels it is. like it is, and I think most people perceive that it is, uh, largely because it's on the other side of 41, and it's, you know, it's on the other side of 110. Well, I'm thinking back when we closed, what's the school out there? Uh, sunset? When we closed Sunset, mm -hmm. um, oh no, we can't have the school buses go across the, yeah. the bridge. <laughs> You know, school buses go across the bridge all the time. I mean, there was people really angry that yes. we were closing that and bringing them into town. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's always been a, a, a challenge out there. All right. Um, so again, I, I, in terms of general uh, geography, um, you know, we sort of, as we've kind of talked with with our groups, we've sort of kind of general locations so again giving this general guidance to the district to say hey for this facility we think it would be best served in, in one of one or, or, or more of these locations um, so again downtown um, closer central to the existing schools uh, along the I-90 or uh, 41 corridor um, looking potentially at the at the festival grounds uh, and, and acquiring that uh, Riff Road or some other district owned property um, or some of the kind of quote unquote growth areas that do exist um, within the, the community and the, the district at large. Um, and then uh, the other piece is, you know, you know partnerships. Uh, is, is this something to enter into in, in some way, shape, or form? And, and again, it takes two to tango, but, um, you know, it, it does that allow the opportunity to maybe utilize a, a site that otherwise wouldn't be uh, available? For, for those of us who are GPS challenged, yes. um, I have no idea what you mean by festival grounds. Uh, the country, country festival. Country USA. Country USA. Uh, USA. Country uh, USA. Okay. Okay. I'm like, what? Yeah. Okay. How and then. Uh, 80 acres are for sale out there, correct? It's mm -hmm. large. I think it's 90. Is it 90? There's a, the original land is 66, I think, and there's an additional 30 ish. Yes, on the, on top of Between that. 26 and 44. Thank you. On the other side of the elbow. Okay. There's big, like, rock things with water. Gotcha. Balls. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the entrance is already built for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be kind of cool. We just need to have rock concerts there every summer. We'll right. be good. So again, I'm trying to ask this question, but uh, you know, again, whether it's three or if, if it's just one, as, as you sort of look at those, um, where would you suggest, uh, as we look at this facility, um, best locations or gen these sort of general areas to look at? Again, we don't want to be specific. I appreciate it if you if you are able to be. And then uh, again, you know, kind of looking out, and this will I think will be a question we're going to continue to ask as we move through this. But you know. 
um, how important will it be for this to be connected to any of the other three projects that, that we'll be talking about soon? I mean, I think, I'm guessing we would probably all agree the pool is sort of a natural uh, fit with this, but you know, if we could create something with the outdoor athletic uh, facility, the pool, that you know, I mean, if, if that was all in one location, would that be a benefit or would that maybe, maybe be a hindrance um, or, or a negative because, of, again, of the size of, of site that we potentially need? So, again, relative to sort of location and site selection, um, we'll kind of break out and get back into our groups and, and kind of kick the, those two topics around. Easy access. the gallery back there on, on Phoenix gallery. location uh, as a if the primary function is to have your kids practice and use it you know then obviously you want it close enough for both schools to be able to get it to it that's that's my opinion so something central would be ideal so right in the middle of the river I got all right, um, why don't we start with you guys? I guess my idea, or my thought process behind it being like, and I'm, I just keep going back to that one piece of property I see, and the fact that it's going to be right next to a school that's being built that could be used as, I mean, how much money would it be to create a walkway over Jackson, right? Like the added um, impact of that on the bottom line is probably not gonna be too much comparatively to what the cost of the whole project would be. But I think if you want to get community buy-in and you want to get uh, these people, people to vote for this, getting the downtown businesses and business leaders involved and getting their sphere of influence on board with it, saying, hey, we're going to bring this here. It's going to bring, you know, the opportunity for, you know, people coming in for the weekend um, to come down and use, you know, all the restaurants and bars on Main Street, uh, you know, go to Beckett's for the night, uh, sleep at the Best Western. I think you're gonna have a better opportunity to get more voting through the positive way through that than if it's going to be like on the 41 corridor where you have a lot more franchises and bigger chains, right? You have a lot of more Oshkosh people that own businesses in the downtown area. So that's just my two cents on it. I just think you have a better opportunity to get it passed if it's and it's also a way more central area for the schools to get to as well so anything else you know i guess where we kind of landed the easy access to the site if you know there's going to be uh, if there's going to legitimately be a bunch of these tournaments and things being able to access it easily is important and then make sure that there's adequate size there of a lot for, you know, if, if you did something where you try to go small on the parking, I don't think that can be held by 41 because then where do you park? You know, you don't want people parking on like how they used to along the frontage road for Country USA and people get hit by cars, you know. I mean, that's one thing if that's in the neighborhood, then you can probably do that and you know, kind of like how the arena is set up. Then we thought it um, it's probably highly important to have it located with the other facilities because then you can be pretty efficient with transportation that you probably need to provide for those that can't get there on their own. You know, if you get them scattered all over, that's not easy to run the transportation from two schools to multiple other sites scattered all over. It'd be uh, a lot more efficient having it all funneled into one place and. That would help. I get the point though downtown you know if you have it out by 41 you're not helping the downtown businesses really at all because when families come out of there unless they got a big gap of time from some tournament they're probably not going downtown they're going to go patronize something along 41 so I don't, I don't know what that looks like for a big swath of land for downtown it would be an opportunity to redevelop a, you know, a tough neighborhood potentially you know, that can be a benefit. You know, you can kind of do two things at once there, but um, that just may be harder to knock off because of land availability. Um, we, as we were talking, we thought that the 
250 parking was too about too small for what we were hoping for. It. Um, but we also then at the same time felt that it should be centrally located and that can limit the space in the acreage that's available. We kind of landed in a different spot for all the same reasons. So um, we did a process of elimination. We said, okay, downtown location probably not ideal, traffic jams, the small streets in the downtown might be a little cumbersome. Uh, Rift Road, not ideal. There's no place to eat. We probably be supporting businesses in Wanakan more than in Oshkosh. That was a good point. So we kind of landed on the festival grounds. Um, there's places to eat, shop, there's lodging, traffic might be manageable. It's visible. It's not west centric or north centric. Um, it's accessible. So, same kind of points, but we landed on a completely different spot. As an old, <coughs> Madison Edgewood has tried to build a, a facility in the city forever and it's gotten denied by due to lighting issues, due to noise issues, historic homes. Yeah. I mean, it, that, there's, I think, other factors when you go into a city mm -hmm. that come into play. Now, we're not talking about holding outdoor events yet, but I know that's been discussed as, as a possible option. Um, so. And, and then how much expansion, if you're going to expand at some point, 10, 20 years down the road, how much expansion is actually there? Uh, you had, I'm sorry, you had his hand up to you. Well, I was just thinking, you know, if, let's say, for the sake of conversation, the festival area land, that doesn't preclude locals from building restaurants or something in that particular area. Uh, secondly, uh, we all know, roof, you would have a wow factor if we put these all together and people driving at 41 and back and realtors looking at all selling uh, people move to town I mean your people are going to see that all the time and that that may help the community too um, if we go downtown we're going to have to buy five or six blocks and bulldoze them in old residential areas and then as Will said then you're going to have the fight back from uh, landlords I mean, I, I, I don't know much property downtown that you can, what, what you can do. Well, I, I'll, I'll just speak to, uh, again, Rhinelander's been brought up a lot of times. That's probably the hardest. I, I, I've been to the, the high school now probably 12 times. I still map quest it every single time because it's just a weird kind of yeah. circuitous route through the city. So not, not to say that that's always the solution, but I, I promise you people will find it. If you build a facility like this people will find it but um, but, but good points yeah um my only concern about it not being like in a downtown centralized area would be transportation for the student right because that's who this is for in the in the big impact in their big picture right it's for the kids and there's gonna be some kids that have to take public transportation there's not public transportation out to the fairgrounds there's not public transportation out to Rift Road there is public transportation to the downtown area and I think that overlooking that aspect would be and that the fact that this is for the students like just as much as it's for the community like I think that's something that needs to be taken into consideration can, can we start having conversations with community partners like go transit I know the school district has done that before uh, we can uh, I, I think it's probably premature at this oh, point no, correct. But, but yeah no, yeah yeah, that certainly wouldn't. If, if it was something that was in the downtown, it was that that would be impacted by, you know, you'd have to have that conversation with the city, with Go Transit, um, with the area businesses. I mean, yeah. Um, good good comments on on the the, the locations. Uh, I, I I think I heard maybe from one of the groups or, or maybe just a couple. I guess. In terms of kind of combining these, um, you know, how how how, and again, I think we can continually come back to that. But how important? Uh, again, I think the PAC is probably probably going to end up here, uh, or the, the initial thought is that probably is part of this. But you know, the pool uh, outdoor athletic and uh, this indoor athletic, you know, what are your, what are additional thoughts on you know how important it is? Those are together. If the land parcel is big enough, it really makes sense to at least put the outdoor facilities with this. Yeah. Um, the, I think the pool 
I mean, we haven't talked about it yet, but um, it's going to be a, less of a footprint, so that could go in a different location pretty easily. Subject matter. Yeah, your kid is in a lot of sports, though, and you have a little bird with laughing seasons. Might not all be bad, though, to have things close. I mean, I can think of being at baseball games and needing to like have five minutes to run over to get to a band concert. You know, I mean, we're going to lose, you know what I mean? That's, that's going to be really hard for some kids when we start separating and getting so far away. And yet on the other hand, that, that's where the land is. You know, so this is, I, I don't know, I don't have an easy solution, but I... The way we're scheduled currently with things so back to back, we better have things either really together or realize that there's going to be really tough decisions kids have to make. And, and that's less than ideal, too. Uh, subject matter experts, again, thoughts on you know the importance of combining these and opportunities or challenges with that? Well, there's a lot of value, I think, in you know an indoor practice facility and a competition stadium if the weather gets bad you've got somewhere to go uh, you can continue and do something at least so that there'd be a lot of value in, in combining those two in particular in, in my mind for sure I just add you know my kids are an age where we're traveling all over now and one of the places my daughter's going is in Indianapolis this summer it's a 400 acre complex and in some ways you know it's almost too big, right? You know, so I think you're always balancing putting everything together and making it too big with the impact of making it easy to get to and not having to park a half a mile away from. So, you know, I think partnering some of these projects together maybe makes sense, putting them all together. I don't know if that's the best. Um, you know, it, there's, there's going to be give and take in everything. I think the outdoor thing is a little bit different than an indoor, in my opinion. You know, outdoor you think of more space, you know, for a variety of reasons with fields and parking and all that stuff. So, I know I'm all over the place, but. And I guess, uh, you know, the, the thing we're going to have to weigh too is, um, you know, we talked about trying to create a central location and, you know, maybe there is a spot for the indoor facility being smaller to try to accomplish the, the Know, more of a central location but given the space and we have we're not there yet but this you know I think everyone realizes a football field and baseball fields and stuff is going to need to require quite a bit bigger size site so you know that that might well having it all together might be a benefit on one hand it, it'll it'll make you know it might make the travel worse on a day-to-day on -day basis to you know both of the facilities rather than maybe one of them being central so Again, tonight wasn't necessarily solving that. We'll continue to kind of revisit location as we go through the process. Um, but again, I, I think it's good to get your feedback and, and starting this process. Hey, that's one thought about size and how, how big we want this. I remember at UWO, the day they opened the, the door for the new rec center, the word was too damn small. And it's a big facility for the university and it's, you know, it's, we, I, I hope we don't go to a point where, well, we're going to shrink this to get approval versus doing what we need to do. Mm -hmm. well, and I, I just, I hope in, in the long run we don't compromise. It's parking to me is a big, is a big thing. And I mean, I know, and we can't underestimate the fan base that we have in these sports. Um, and yeah, we have fans and parents coming. But you also have buses coming, and if you come to West and you have a swim meet or best in a basketball, try to find a spot to park. You know, and I think if we have the one time to get it right for the parking, if we go too small, we're going to be in trouble. All of our schools we go to are flat surface. What about multi-story parking? Is that super expensive compared to buying, you know, 500 spaces flat versus 500 spaces up? I, I used to know, I believe there, I'm, I'm gonna, this is probably isn't the right number, and again, there's gonna be some inflation, but I, I always thought it was like 12000 or $20,000 per parking spot. It was kind of a, a rule of thumb. Um, 
Um, so so I, for twenty thousand dollars, you can have your own parking spot. Go <laughs> 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 well, fund me. Uh, well, well, we can. Well, I'll, yeah. we'll, we'll, I'll try to get updated yeah. information on that. Um, Good point. Well, especially if we're looking at places, and we feel going downtown or centrally located, we're going to have to go up a little. I mean, the university fought that for years. And finally, they went up with a three-story, and it's not an ugly-looking structure. It's, you know, they decorated it nicely, and it, it's usable. So, all right. Well, that uh, is our dog and pony show for tonight. Um, again, we're back here again on Monday already. Um, back on schedule. Yeah, back on schedule, and and changing uh, topics to performing arts center. So. Um, that should be fun. We will have the opportunity to tour the uh, existing facility. I think we're, uh, we'll probably leave a little time to do that as well. Um, not, I don't know that there's a necessarily value there, but um, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll see you on Monday. Thank you all for coming.